Great. Brilliant. Okay, so um, thanks everybody for coming along today. Um, as Sinead said, you know, we're really excited about this new programme that's starting in September, um, and I'm delighted to be programme chair. So I'm based in the School of Electronic Engineering at DCU, um, but this programme is a joint programme, so it's um, also being run by the School of Law and Government. So um, today I'm just going to give a, a brief overview of the course. Um, so I'll start off just giving you an introduction about the background, um, you know, why we developed the course, um, tell you a bit about the structure, you know, what you'd be studying, why you might like to study the course, um, and then possible career options. And then at the end, um, we'll have time for questions. So why would you be interested in doing this course? Well, obviously, you know, there's a lot of still a lot of global challenges. Um, today and you know we're all aware that climate change is real and it affects so many different parts of our, our lives and um, some other issues are things like global health and we're you know coming out of a pandemic but there's also still lots of other global issues around healthcare, you know locally and globally and um, energy again linked to climate change we need to develop renewable sources of energy new materials develop sustainable solutions and um, and also you know energy as well as developing renewable energy, a lot of the co countries are still, you know, there's about 13% of the population that still don't have access to the grid and don't have reliable sources of electricity. Um, similarly with food, there's about 10% of the world population that go hungry still. Um, and again, that's partly linked to water. There's again, one in three people don't have access to reliable and clean water supply. So not just about quantity of water, but also the quality of water um, and how that affects them. Um, people's lifestyles. So there's all these different challenges and the thing about them is that they're all interrelated. So, you know, if you look at food supply, that obviously affects, you know, people's health and well-being. If there's, you know, conflict in a country that can affect how, you know, people are being vaccinated, how they get healthcare to people. It also affects food supply. And um, similarly, climate change is going to link to those that can affect food being grown and, um, and people's health. So as you can see, all these things are interrelated, energy and climate change are linked. You know, the, that, the effect of pollution then on the environment, depending on the type of energy you're using. And also you know, the access to water. And um, as I said, these are all, if you drew lines between them, they're all really interlinked. So if you fix one thing, it's gonna have a knock on effect on something else. So how can we chase these? These are like wicked problems or really complex problems. So, I mean, science and technology can definitely offer some solutions. You know, we can develop new materials, we can develop um, digital sensors to make things more efficient. But we can't just use those technologies, or, you know, and scientific developments by themselves. Um, and we also need to, if we're designing solutions, we need to think about, you know, not just the environment, but also the economy. And, and there's a balance there between looking at the environment um, and, you know, to growth and development and business. Also developing new technologies, we have to think, well, will people actually use it? And you know, if you want to change how people um, you know, address climate change, you might have all these great solutions, but people you know, mightn't want to adopt it and they like to take an easier option perhaps. Um, so you know, getting people's awareness about a lot of these global issues is really important, um, but also taking into account pe people's um, behavior. The other thing to, we need to think about is you know, about what policies are in different countries and how can you know, we, we um, implement policies, how can we, um, you know, use information to help to help um, inform governments to create better policies. So all of these different factors need to be taken into account if you're trying to, to tackle any of these challenges. And we all ha we have to do it then with the limited resources that are on the earth as well. So in order to face these challenges, you really need to work across all these different disciplines. You can see there's so many different factors involved. Um, and being able to, to you know, work with people from, from different disciplines who have a different perspective and look at things a different way um, and being able to come together and come up with new solutions and being able to innovate in order to, to you know, create new solutions um, that, that are going to create change. So uh, as I mentioned, that this, that's why we developed this programme, that you know, we need some partnership between different disciplines. So we've got the School of Law and Government. Um, and the School of Electronic, 
on electronic engineering. So it's bringing together that mixture of technology with social science. So being able to develop sustainable solutions, looking at the, the bigger picture, not just deciding, you know, okay, this technology is going to work or, or this policy, that it all needs to be brought together. Okay, so in the School of Law and Government, um, we have a uh, 51 academic staff and it's a um, you know, very active school in terms of you know developing innovative teaching being involved in research and um, the staff are always in, engaged um, in, with the media develop you know um, talking to journalists uh, publishing articles and um, submitting um, you know documents on on policy and, and involved in, in government and um, they won law school of the year last year as well um, and again, as I mentioned, there's a number of research institutes that they're involved in. Moving on. Okay. Um, and I'm based in the School of Electronic Engineering. So um, again, we've got a number of ac academic staff who are involved in really in innovative te teaching techniques. And um, because we're engineering, we have technical staff as well. We've got a number of labs uh, for doing sort of practical building circuits and, and um, building prototypes. Again, we're also very much involved in world class research, and there's a number of, of different research centers that staff will be involved with. Um, and there's a picture here of a future tech building, which is currently being built just behind those DCU pillars. Um, and we're looking forward to, to, um, to having some of the Global Challenges students based in there in a few years. So, about the, the course in particular. Um, so it's quite different to say some of the conventional engineering courses or or long government courses where social science courses where you'd have you know hundreds of students. Um, so we just have tw 20 to 25 students um, in first year, and it means you know there's much better engagement then between the lecturers and, our, and the course facilitators and the students, um, and a really nice student community I think. Um, again, you know the big change compared to some of the other courses is that there's a lot of continuous assessment and um, so a lot of project based work um, and much less exams so less focus on you know here's here's a lot of information you know learn that off and do an exam it's much more um, it's much more authentic much more realistic or based on you know projects and challenges that are, are based on real world problems that are influenced um, by either industries or charities um, or society and looking at, at real challenges and to try and make, prepare students for the world of work as much as possible. So we, we take this approach of challenge-based learning is, is a term that, that we use um, for a lot of this project work. So in order to address these projects, um, you know, a big part of it is actually, you know, doing research and understanding what the problem is. So you can really need to, to understand a problem before you can try and solve it. Um, and because, as I mentioned, these problems are all interrelated, there's a number of different stakeholders that are involved and you need to look at, at all those different points of views. So that's really, you know, draws on a lot of the social science side of things. And then, you know, we look at what's technically possible. And um, so from the technology side, you know, to have a knowledge of emerging technologies, um, but also, you know, having a basic fundamental knowledge of science and technology. Um, so you can understand, say, if you're talking about energy systems, well, you know, how does this, uh, you know, um, battery and how, how long is the battery going to work? And then just to weighing up those um, things, understanding how the basics of how electricity works. So, um, yeah, and also a lot of um, data analysis. So, you know, fundamental um, math skills in order to be able to, to analyze data as well. Um, so that's, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about the, about the subjects in a moment. But again, you know, looking at technology um, and then thinking about the, the long government side of things, they'd be looking um, very much at the, the ethics of, and say the ethics of data and the, the laws around data. Um, and also thinking about, you know, emerging technologies bring a lot of new challenges that changes um, how we live. And it, it brings a lot of, of new ethical questions when you develop new technologies because of things we haven't considered before. So again, as you design these solutions, you need to look at all the constraints and look at all those stakeholders and think about well, what effect is this new technology or this new solution going to have on, on society and on, you know, the economy. So it really is that intersection of, of social science with technology. So I um, see a question here about how technology and social science balanced. Um, and it, 
it is very much equal um, and I'll, I'll um, just show some of the, the, the modules that we study and try to show how we bring those together. So we've tried to design it so that it's not divided as, okay, we're studying maths today and, and electronics and then um, politics. We, we, we do, um, you know, study both of those and pretty much equally, but the way we assess the course is very much brings that knowledge together. So you're given maybe, you know, a challenge that will take the knowledge of, um, you know, a data, maths and data analysis in order to look at a policy and analyze particular policies. So we really try to bring it together um, and not, um, not have it as two separate schools teaching different things, that it's really um, very integrated. So just talking about the, the, the types of um, modules that you'd be studying. So we have six themes running through each year. Um, so the way we designed the course was we thought, well, what do the graduates need to be able to do? And what, what would you be doing when you're working um, to, to try and tackle different, different problems or you know, taking on projects? What do you need to be able to do? So one of the, the first theme is, is looking at the problems of so being able to explore and define problems. Um, and in order to do that, you need to sort of be able to understand how to, to carry out research. How do you, you know, collect data um, you know, get, getting all those underlying research skills and also looking at things like, so we have, um, you know, topics looking at introduction to research data and the mathematics of change. So, you know, looking the whole world is, uh, um, you know, based on maths in a way, if you look at, at trends and how, if you're you know, looking at climate change, so seeing how average temperatures increased over 100 years and um, just being able to look at those kind of trends, whether it's, you know, related to and um, to climate or to, to energy use um, or to healthcare and the amount of, of vaccines that are being rolled out and um, everything, you know, you really need to, to be able to understand a problem to be able to look at those numbers and see well, what's happening and where are the trends and, it, and is it really a problem um, and where, where that source of that problem is. So that's exploring and defining problems. Then we have um, a module based on shaping global leaders. So all the skills that you'd need in order to, to, to lead a project and to you know, create change. Um, so you know, being, able, being able to tackle these global challenges means you know, driving projects that are, are going to create change in the world. Um, and whether that's at, at a local level or you know, at a national level or global level. So, you know, there's a journey there throughout the years in terms of, you know, shape, getting those skills to become, become a leader, to become a project leader. So in first year, we have things like project management, project planning and management. Um, we're also looking at politics and global development. So looking at, you know, um, the effects of, you know, looking at leadership and, and, and development um, and um, looking at that worldwide as well. We've also got a number of transversal skills um, that are embedded in the program. So in first year, we have um, a sort of a short module on career visioning, and um, which is led by the you know the students. Um, it's 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 run across a number of programs, and um, but um, designed for um, for global challenges. And there's also a discover program, and um, which looks at different life skills. So transitioning from um, from secondary school to university to, you know to look at um different ways of learning and to adjust um you know to, to a change in that, that style and um, then the next module in um the global challenges is the art and science of solution design and um, and in, ter in terms of designing the solution you know we have the art and science because it's about technology but also the art really brings in that human element and um, you know, the, the human factors almost always bring in a challenge because it's something unexpected that you can't always plan for. Um, so in that one, we again, we're looking at sort of politics, global development, um, looking at sustainable technologies, understanding, you know, how, how to design um, sustainable solutions. Um, and again, data and data analysis is, is very relevant um, uh, for, for designing systems and, and understanding solutions. Then we have module um, looking at impact. So, you know, if you implement a project, you need to be able to see well what kind of change, what impact is that having? Um, is it being able to evaluate um, whether your solution um, is is creating positive impacts, and also evaluating what negative impacts it's having. Um, so again, looking at 
at um, topics like introduction to global challenges um, in that one. Again, so these topics that are sort of embedded in these boxes are um, sort of lectures and topics that you'd be studying, but they relate to all these different themes because as I mentioned, everything is, has, um, is interrelated. So, you know, as I said, things are, are balanced. You'd be studying some topics like politics um, and then things like data, but within those, um, like each, each of these, modules are facilitated both by um, somebody from long government and somebody from electronic engineering and similarly all these topics we have you know co-teaching and it's very much a team um team delivery of, of the program from the two schools and um, so just moving on now to exploring enabling technology and solutions again um, sustainable technology is very much um involved in, in that module and um, but also looking at things like development and so say in first year with sustainable technologies, we're looking at um, prototyping a solar powered car. Um, but also as a bigger picture, you'd be looking at, um, you know, the use of electric cars and, the, you know, the bigger impact and, and kind of looking at, at um, you know, the wider societal impact of those, even though you're building something in the lab, um, but also considering, you know, the use of batteries and um, energy use and, and looking at the big picture um, as well just to provide some context for what you're actually doing. Um, and then the, the final module here is global challenges in practice. Um, and that's, you know, a practical design challenge. Um, I'll talk a bit about this in, in the next slide. Um, but in first year, this is a challenge, a design challenge from Engineers Without Borders. Um, and they have a competition called Where There Is No Engineer. Um, and I, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but just to mention these six themes, run throughout the four years of the problem of the, of the program so um you know it, being able to explore problems being able to lead being able to design solutions evaluate the solutions seeing what impact it has understand enabling technologies and being able able to to take on real world practical challenges and um, so each year you know we have those themes but they develop in complexity as the years go on and um, so you're not going to throw one in um, in first year to, to solve the biggest challenge and um, we really you know work towards it and build up and you might take the same type of challenge um, and each year look at it in a slightly different way and um, so it, it just you know kind of increments um, as the years go by so i mentioned in first year we have this design challenge with engineers without borders and um, so this is um a, an ngo which um is based partly with the TU Dublin, and they run this um, design challenge across all a number of institutes around Ireland. It's open to, to not just to engineering, but also to product design, to architecture, um, and it's not just open to students, but also to, to companies as well. And the, the idea of it, so they, they partner with a number of, um, of charities and organizations around the world, and they have a different challenge each year. Um, and each of those challenges are based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So they have six themes each year um, and students can choose which theme they want to, to focus their project on. So what you'll be doing for, say, this Global Challenges um, challenge module is, you know, looking at their design challenge and trying to develop a solution over, um, over the year. And they, then it, in um, April or May, they have um, a, a kind of poster, a poster competition with all the entries. Um, but also engineers that board has run uh, workshops throughout the year. They also interact with their partners abroad. Um, so they have an online academy with a number of videos, but they also um, have webinars and seminars. So there's a link there with these external partners that they have. Um, and I'll just show, hopefully this will work. Um, So just to give you a student perspective on, on this is from a few years ago, um, what students thought of this kind of design competition. And this is just an example of the kind of projects um, and challenges that, that you might be doing in, in the Global Challenges Programme. So I'll just play a few seconds of it, just to see the student feedback. And we saw that this would be a perfect example of something that could be implemented in Kenya. We wanted to change it a little bit so that 
it, we, we wouldn't have as much reliance on the electronic side of things. We realise that most of the natural resources of uh, water in the in the country are already in use. So we decided to look outside the box and we thought it's a very humid country, so maybe there's a way of doing that. It's unique in the way that in mean, normal kind of college projects you're given a specific thing and you're just you go through the process of that. Whereas this we were given a problem and we were like it was an open book for us to find and follow through. So we really kind of tested ourselves and I think there was parts during the process that both we and the lecturers at different stages were like is this going to work? Are they on the right track? And towards the end, I think not only were we convinced and enthusiastic for it, but our actual lecturers became more enthusiastic, and that was a real help as well. Okay, so um, nice to see the student perspective. And so I'm looking forward to next year being able to, uh, these kind of webinars showing what the DCU students have produced and, and what the DCU students um, think of it. But it's, it's a nice there that it's um, the students and lecturers are exploring themselves and, and um, you know, there's, there's no right or wrong answer. It's it's really about designing something new and, and exploring and trying things out. Um, and you can see as well that that, that link um, with the external partners in, in, in Africa in that case. Um, so then just to mention in third year, um, so one of the advantages of this course is that we have um, a work placement in third year. So that's a, a nine month work placement. And um, these are some of the companies that um, the engineering course would um, would partner with. Um, Accenture is is uh, mentioned in the middle there, and they're actually um, one of the industry partners for Global Challenges. Um, so th they've helped to influence the design of our course, and um, they're very much supportive of the course. Um, and they will, um, like a lot of these companies would be coming in as guest lecturers, and um, Accenture will be involved um, directly in, in um, particularly that they're interested in that design challenge and kind of helping to mentor students and, and to give advice. So why would you study this program? Um, so some of the advantages are having a small class size and um, with the it's quite a unique com combination of, of um, modules so it's the only program of its kind in Ireland and it's not that many worldwide it's only a, two or three other options that I know of and um, we're looking at really new ways of teaching really engaged and um, and you know, getting getting having real world real world projects um, and to to um, you know really um, create change and to to get people enthusiastic about the projects. Um, there's you know things like virtual labs, there's simulations, um, running design sprints, and again, there's very close involvement with industry throughout the program. Um, in addition to that, that three year or third year work placement. Um, so. We designed the program, you know, looking at people who want to, to create change, who want to be future leaders and lead, um, you know, new projects, um, innovative projects, being able to look at the big picture, solve problems, be creative, um, you know, and people who are really ambitious and curious and passionate about um, social and technological innovation. So some of the job titles might be things like project leader, um, digital innovator strategic innovator, looking at sustainable, sustainability management, um, and either in public sector or private sector, there's, there's a lot of different options there. So the course, just um, the details are CAO code, um, it's a four-year course, and there is a maths requirement, which um, is a minimum H5 or a, an O2. So it's not as high as the, the um, engineering degrees would be, um, but there is you know, a certain level of maths involved because there is a certain um, level of data analysis um, involved in the course. Okay, so I'm happy to, to answer any questions. Thank you, Shirley, for that um, presentation. I never get sick of hearing about this course because it's just it sounds so exciting. Uh, I, I really love how the kind of structure of the course complements, um, you know, the nature of the course as well, being innovative and you know, a lot of project work, less exams, more focus on doing and learning in that way, which I'm sure is the way eventually all learning is going to go, but we're certainly uh, ahead of the curve with this one, which is great. So if anyone has any additional questions, please feel free to pop them in either the chat box or the Q&A box, um, and we'd be happy to answer before we head off. Don't see any coming in just yet. Um, 
maybe you've answered all the questions already surely in the presentation <laughs> yeah if anyone has questions and um, they're welcome to to send me an email and um, it's shirley.coyle at dcu.ie i think it's on uh, the website brilliant we've got one um question that's come in there um yeah may i ask what kind of master's degree can someone join i suppose after they complete this after. course you're thinking very far ahead <laughs> yeah um yeah i suppose they um there are master's courses in global challenges not you know i think there might be one in, new one in trinity but there you could um say in fourth year if you found you know you would rather go towards the long government you know social sciences or engineering you could actually specialize in that and if you wanted to um to actually you know focus more on the technology or on social science you could go into a master's in e either of those i think um it's definitely some an option for people but we'd hope that um you know by the end of this that like we're talking to Accenture and they're saying they need these people now <laughs> they're looking for the graduates now so yeah um, unlike some courses where you know you kind of have to go into a master's before you get a job mm -hmm. I think that the graduates are going to be in really high demand um, and will uh, walk into jobs but it depends what people want that's great and I suppose the beauty of it as well is that it, it is a very broad course as we've as we've heard so you might enter thinking you want to do one thing and you've got your mind set on it and by the time four years later rolls around you actually could have a total different interest and um, so we, we think these kind of broad courses are great and um, designed for the future a question there what are the career options after you graduate yeah so um I suppose it's, it's different to from say engineering where you kind of go in and say okay I'm an engineer that it's um you're going to be working across disciplines and very much you know um leading projects um but being able to communicate with people in the business who are looking after finance with the designers with the engineers and um, so having that kind of role but not um being able to, to really communicate with them properly and understand where they're coming from because you have that technical background and you also have you know knowledge of policy and um so i think being part of a project team particularly being able to, to lead a project team leave those kind of innovative projects and um, so one of the some of the the um the, the career options we have there are like you know digital innovator or um strategic innovator and um, so a lot of new roles that are coming out so technology is, is involved in everything now and um, so if it, it could be within a, a discipline or a, um, a sector that traditionally doesn't have much technology and that needs to innovate and that needs to need some digital transformation and um, it could be kind of leading projects in in that kind of space yeah i don't think any industry is going to escape that um needing to adapt to the new world so we're, we're going to need a lot of these graduates i i bet um a question there in the chat surely um about kind of how many days a week or i suppose contact hours of lectures and if it's possible to do any of them remotely yeah what we're planning at the moment we're, we're still figuring out timetables for the coming year at the minute um but we're looking at having you know a cyber monday so to have one day of the week where um it will be remotely so we're just trying to coordinate all that and um, mm. a lot of the the so things like um some of the topics you'd be studying um would be could be online so what we plan to do is have things like video lectures stuff that you don't um you, we don't want people sitting in a bit lecture hall getting bored that if you come into campus that it's going to be engaging and that yeah. it's workshops type activities it's you know kind of drop in clinics with your lecturer and um, as opposed to, to sitting down through an hour of lectures and um, that, that's kind of what the way we, we planned it great thank you and another question there um someone has asked is it heavily based on engineering um so it's a it's a bsc as opposed to a bng so it's not um there's not the same level of technical detail that you would have in it as in an engineering degree um but there is a certain amount as i mentioned saying first year building um little um solar cars in um and it might be worth looking at the prospectus and looking at the, the um the subject say from later years and um, but say in third in third year there'd be some machine learning and ai so doing it at a certain level but not to the same degree as you would with an engineering degree obviously we can't um so 
um, yeah, some interest in technology would be useful. So it's it's technology as opposed to engineering. Mm -hmm. If that helps. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you. I don't see any more questions coming in and we've just passed the half an hour mark. So I'm conscious of everybody's time and um, surely getting back to work and also our students who are likely going to be sitting the leaving cert in a couple of weeks um, or a week's time at this point. Um, if anyone does have any follow up questions, you can contact either Shirley directly. And as she said, her email is on the web page for this course. Or if you're not really sure what your question is in relation to that could be broader, it could be accommodation or CAO requirements and things like that. You can contact studenthelp at dcu.ie and we can redirect your query then to the best office. And um, thanks again, Shirley, for your time. We really appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And um, we'll be in touch soon. And the very best of luck with everything. See ya. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks. Bye-bye. Look, everybody.